uh, lady or gentleman. Uh, let's go ahead and get started here. So um, I'm going to do the first two examples worked out on video um, as a set, and then I'll drop down and do the second two as a second video. Um, so you might see more than one QR code, but it's going to take you the same thing. Um, so I want to do this on video instead of doing this as a whole class this way that if you need to kind of stop, um, rewind it, hear a part again, you have the ability to do that um, because it's important that you have the skill moving forward in geometry. Um, so without further ado, let's just get into it. And so if I want to solve for this unknown side length um, designated by X, I do have to, I should probably do some identifying first. Um, so we know this is the right triangle, which means the Pythagorean theorem automatically applies. Uh, but we should also make sure we have the, the right starting information. Um, to operate the Pythagorean theorem, we need two side lengths, which we, we are afforded here. Um, we have one is 9 and one is 12. Um, and we're being asked to find the hypotenuse. Now we know this hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. Um, in the right triangle, the hypotenuse will always be across from the right angle. Um, that's why it's actually the biggest side length. We'll go more into depth later in the semester about why that is. But for now, we can take this to be a rule. And so we have everything we need here to operate the Pythagorean theorem. We have a right triangle, uh, which we have um, marked in the diagram. We have at least two of two to three side lengths. In this case, these are the legs, and then we're being asked to find the hypotenuse. Um, so let's just get into the mechanics of it. The first thing you always want to do when you're solving a problem like this is write down the formula. This does a couple things. Um, it convinces me that you know what formula to use, so you're not just guessing. Um, but also, this kind of keeps us aligned as like mathematicians um, to make sure we're applying the right theorem and we're substituting the right parts. Um, we also want to probably take an opportunity here to make sure we know where, what goes where in this formula. Um, so this 12 that I have highlighted in blue, um, it serves as one, as a, one of the two side lengths of the right triangle, the non-hypotenuse. And so we're going to put it in for A or B. It doesn't actually matter which one you put it in, so I'm just going to put it in for B. Um, the important part and the one that's always going to be a hard and fast rule is that you always have to put the hypotenuse in for C. But the other ones really don't matter. And so this guy that's 9, I'll go ahead and designate it for A. Um, which means our value of x actually is going to go in for c. Um, so if we do a little substitution here, and I do want to do the substitution using parentheses, um, that's just good practice. Whenever you substitute into a formula, you always want to put parentheses around it to ensure that the grouping maintains consistent. Um, so we put 12 in for b, and then c, where it's going to have an x. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill in all the other elements of the formula. We are adding a squared and b squared, and that should be equal to our c squared value. And so we have some substitutions that happened here. Now we just have to carry out the calculations. Um, 9 squared, that's going to be 81. Um, we have, I have a calculator off screen um, where you just, know, you just have to kind of know your squares. Uh, 12 squared, 12 times squared is 144. Um, X squared, we haven't done anything yet. So we'll go ahead and bring that guy down. And then we'll complete the formula. So we're going to add together here. And that's still going to be equal to X squared. Now from this point forward, if you got this far, you're in good shape. Um, all you have to do is carry out, finish, uh, carry out, finish solving the equation. Um, so we have to add 81 plus 144. Okay. So we'll take 81 plus 144. Uh, and that's going to be 225. Uh, so let's go get that down. So this is going to combine to make 225. Um, and that's going to equal x squared. Um, now, the last step of this is getting rid of this squared value, this little guy right here, because we're not interested in the x squared value, we're interested just in the x value itself. Um, if, we're gonna, if we have something that's squared, what undoes it would be a square root. Uh, and of course, I've applied to one side, i got to apply it to both sides. And so if I can just figure out what the square root of 144 is, I'm sorry, square root of 225, I'm going to be in business. Um, so again, off screen, I'm going to go ahead and find that using my square root button. Um, and 225, the square root of 225 is 15. And so this tells me our x value is 15. Now before we move on to the next problem, we should probably take a second and make sure like this answer even makes sense. Because um, just because I got an answer that is a whole number, or it seems okay, I want to make sure that it makes con sense in the context of the problem itself. Um, so when I'm looking at this right triangle, I can make an observation that we were trying to find the hypotenuse. And we spoke before about the hypotenuse being the biggest side. And so when I look at this number, it's got to be a number bigger than my other two sides. And my biggest one here is 12. I got 15 for an answer, so it seems pretty legit. Um, so in this case, I can, I can double check my work, of course. That's something you should always do as you're solving math problems. Um, but you should always have an eye on what's reasonable as far as an answer. In this case, 15 totally is. Okay, so in quick review, the first thing you should do is make sure the formula you want to use actually applies. In this case we're using Pythagorean theorem. It does apply because we have a right triangle and we're given two of the three side lengths. 
case. We're given two to the three side lengths here, and we have a right triangle. And so we can immediately go into our Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We can substitute the values. Um, the two side lengths, uh, the a and the b value, it doesn't matter where you put them. I just chose those spots because that's what was in my head about it. Um, we square the values. 9 squared is 81. 12 squared is 144. Um, and then we substitute x in for c. Um, and now we're just into your algebra 1 uh, solving methods. That's why you took algebra 1 before geometry. And so we're adding together, undoing the square by square rooting. We get 15. The last thing we want to do is check the reasonableness of our answer. We know we're trying to find the hypotenuse. That's got to be a big side length. So there you go. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the second example in, in very much the same way. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is identify what in the world we're trying to find. In this case, we're trying to find this bottom length designated by x. Um, it is a right triangle, so we're in business about using the Pythagorean theorem again, because here's your right guy. Um, and so we now should probably take a look at what we've been given. Okay. Um, so in this case, I'm given 24, which serves as this. Um, and then I'm also given 6 here, which serves as this side. Um, now in terms of actually identifying, um, it looks like they're trying to trick us a little bit here. Um, because we're given actually this side length, and that's across to the right angle. So this guy is actually the hypotenuse, um, which we'll have to pay really close attention to later um, because we might accidentally um, missubstitute our formula. Um, but we, we do have enough to operate the Pythagorean theorem, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the formula. And again, we're going to start by writing it down. Again, that just makes sure that you're communicating with me that you know what you're doing. And so mistakes from that, from that point forward probably aren't that major. Uh, but also gives you some organization to help you navigate through the problem. Um, I'm going to take a second and designate what I want to put where. And so um, 6 is a side length, so it can use either A or B. I'll use B in this case, so that will be that guy. Um, I'm given the hypotenuse, which is 24. Now, I might be tempted to put that in for A because I'm not thinking really hard about where that should go. But you know that should actually go in for C. Um, because C is going to be the hypotenuse, it always serves as the largest side. And just because we have been given in this case doesn't mean that it changes what we do. C will always be the hypotenuse even if it's given. Which means we're actually solving for, in this case, A. Um, because that's the remaining side length designated by X. Um, so as I substitute in, again I'm going to use parentheses to do that. Um, X is going to go in for my A, so that's going to be squared. Uh, my B value is going to be the 6, again in parentheses. Um, and then my C value is going to be 24, um, which again should be squared. Uh, so let me fill in the rest of the equation to round this out. So we'll take x squared plus 6 squared, and that should be 24 squared. So this is just a relationship amongst three numbers. And so you don't always have to solve for this last value, like the C value. Um, you're just solving for the thing that you don't know. In this case, the thing we don't know is going to be that A. Um, so let's go ahead and carry through um, the arithmetic here. So x squared is just going to stay x squared. Um, 6 squared will be 36. Um, and 24 squared, which I'll have to use my calculator for that, uh, 24 C squared is 576. All right. Um, so again, now from here, we're just going to do our, um, what we know to do algebraically. And so we're going to solve uh, this equation for x, which means I need to get rid of this plus 36. Well, if you want to get rid of it, add it anything, of course, we'll subtract uh, both sides. Um, so the 36s will go to 0, cancel to 0, as, as it were. Um, the x squared comes down. Uh, 576 minus 36, let's see, 6, 6 is 0, that's 4, um, so that would be 540. Um, last step, of course, is we got to get rid of the square, the square value, which we'll accomplish by square rooting both sides. Um, squares and square roots cancel in the same way addition and subtraction does. Uh, so on this left-hand side, we have x. And I just need to find the square root of 540. Uh, and the square root looks like it's not going to be actually an, uh, a whole number, which is okay, not a big deal. And so we always want to round to this third digit. Um, so right here we have 23.2379. Uh, um, so this 9 will actually kick up that 7. And so this will be approximately equal to uh, 23.2379. Uh, and again, before we stop here, we want to make sure this is a reasonable answer. Um, and so in terms of reasonableness, we always we just want to relate it back to the hypotenuse. Um, we know the hypotenuse itself. Oops, let me get this calculator out of the way. 
Um, the hypotenuse right here is going to be the longest side length of the triangle. And so we got this x value to be 23.238. And although that's pretty close to 24, it's still smaller than 24, which should give us confidence that we are indeed correct here. Um, we can double check our arithmetic, but it seems to me like this fits, so we're just going to leave it at that. And so that's using the Pythagorean theorem in a couple different examples, one where we're trying to find the hypotenuse on the left and one where we're not trying to find the hypotenuse as side length. And again, the second one's going to be tricky, but just keep in mind you're not always solving for the hypotenuse. Um, you're just solving for whatever's unknown. As long as you have two of the three pieces, you can do that in the right triangle. Okay, so the uh, next video is going to cover the ones that are on the grid, but you'll find that they're going to be very similar. Um, so, of course, you're not obligated to watch them, um, but if they're helping, by all means, do so. Um, so that's what I have for these two examples. Thank you very much.